This drone is faster than an F1 car. Red Bull recently raced a Formula 1 car against a drone. And it wasn't just in a straight line, it was around the Silverstone circuit. One of the fastest tracks with the fastest corners on F1's calendar. It's a circuit where Formula 1 cars are very much at home. A track where they're 42 seconds a lap faster than a McLaren Senna. But in this race, the drone was way faster. This is a drone capable of 220 miles an hour. But more impressively, a drone that accelerates from zero to 185 miles per hour in just four seconds. Significantly faster than an F1 car. And it's not just acceleration where it excels, it's when turning as well. This drone produces more lateral g-force, that's turning capability, than any Formula One car. Is that the fastest camera drone in the world? And incredibly, I managed to speak to the founder of Dutch Drone Gods, the company that created this beast. And he shared with me the fascinating story of how they designed the world's fastest camera drone, how they overcame massive engineering problems, what it's like being the only person faster than Max Verstappen around Silverstone, and a little secret about how much faster it really could go. This is a typical racing drone. They're used in competitions, and as you can see, they're pretty fast. They're a quadrocopter design, weighing between 800 and 900 grams. But just look at how they fly. A quadrocopter needs to pitch forward to accelerate, so the propellers are driving the drone forward. But when that happens, the surface area of the drone pushing through the air increases a lot, causing a lot of drag. You hit a wall of of air basically, then the aerodynamics are working against you. And that's one of the reasons these drones have a top speed of only 90 miles per hour. So the typical racing drone design wasn't going to cut it. They needed a higher top speed. So Ralph and the team looked to a rocket drone design. This concept uses propellers designed to fly perpendicular to the ground, meaning that most of the propeller's power can be used to move the drone forward. But if the quadrocopter design is basically just turned on its side, it would be very unstable and impossible to fly around a circuit. So to give it more stability, the drone has this nose on the front, which looks like a rocket. Now, this type of design isn't new. It's been used for maximum speed world record attempts before, such as this attempt by Luke Maximo Bell. We do have a new record. And this attempt was incredible. He managed to reach a top speed of 401 kilometers per hour. But this is very different to the Red Bull Challenge. First, it's just a speed attempt in a straight line, and the rules are completely different. They take the average speed over a 100 meter distance, and you got to do that in both directions. So Luke only needed his drone to be fast over 100 meters, but Silverstone is 5,891 meters. That's almost 60 times longer. And Silverstone has 18 turns, which are a very enjoyable combination of slow, medium, and fast corners, meaning that Ralph and his team would have to figure out how to make the drone brake, turn, and accelerate faster than an F1 car. And that is no simple task. So where on earth did they start? Well, the whole process wasn't all that quick. We took a year in total for the, the whole project and the final drone is internally, we call it the V3. But there were a couple of versions before drone number three. The first drone was basically a test mule to narrow down the hardware that they needed. The team tested different batteries, motors, and propellers. And this first version didn't even have a camera, as they were basically just gathering data. Then the second version was to test the GoPro camera and its stabilization, because the team knew that with all that power going through the propellers, there was going to be a lot of vibration. And that that would be a challenge for the camera. And the final version was all about optimization. We really made it shorter, lighter, optimized everything. We worked with Red Bull Advanced Technologies then to make it even lighter. So they made the canopy, the outside parts, and some of the carbon structures from some really like cool materials to make it even lighter. But in terms of their initial design, it was all about the battery. The big problem is that a lap of Silverstone at the required pace needs a lot of power. That means the designers had to start by figuring out how much battery power they were going to need for a flat out lap. And most importantly, how big and heavy that battery was going to be. And if you look at the drone design, you'll see that compared to the top speed focused drones, Ralph's drone has a much larger shaft and nose, and that's mostly battery. The batteries is almost half of the weight, I think 40 to 50% of the weight. So they knew how big the batteries needed to be, but it was then a case of figuring out how to package them in the drone. 
as, just like an F1 car, the distribution of weight dictates how it handles. And that's important because remember, this drone needs to brake, turn and accelerate faster than an F1 car. And how a drone turns is quite different to what I expected. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about the topics covered in this video, you should check out our sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an incredible learning tool and has thousands of interactive maths, data analysis, programming and AI lessons, all of which you can learn by doing. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do and Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in minutes per day. And it's great quality too. An award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals craft all their content. For example, their How Technology Works course takes you inside the technology you use every day, helping you understand how it actually works. To try everything Brilliant offers for a full 30 days for free, just visit brilliant.org forward slash drive61 to start your free trial today or scan the QR code on screen. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So imagine the drone is flying in a straight line, but there's a corner coming up and we need to turn right. As you might expect the outside propellers, the ones on the left in this case, ramp up their speed and the propellers on the right slow down their speed, which then turns the drone. But then as soon as the nose turns across the air, it experiences air resistance on the outside, making the drone turn even more. So then the propellers on the inside of the drone ramp up their speed again in order to counteract the air resistance turning the nose of the drone. Because if the propellers didn't do this, the drone would turn too sharply or spin out of control. Now, this sounds like a complex process, and it is, but Ralph doesn't have to individually control the motors. There's a control unit that understands the input from the pilot and also how much the drone is turning and it then adjusts the motors appropriately. It's constantly monitoring by the gyroscope in the drone how much it has turned. And it's like, I think 4,000 times per second, it's trying to recalculate. And once it gets closer to the position it needs to be in, it will ramp up or down the correct motors again to like so many thousands of times per second. But it wasn't all plain sailing. Ralph admitted that the first drone was very difficult to fly because like a race car, if the weight distribution is off, the vehicle can handle in a weird way. We changed the weight distribution a bit to, to, to improve the cornering because um, uh, the first one was really unstable when, when trying to corner. So we moved kind of the, the weight distribution a bit back and a bit forward to try to find that sweet spot. So with the weight distribution sorted, let's take a look under the cover. Inside the nose cover is an SLS 3D printed chassis. This holds the batteries, camera and other electronics. As you can see from the image, it's pretty minimal in order to save weight. Then the chassis is attached to four carbon fiber arms that hold the motors and propellers. Now, these motors and propellers are something else. They spin at 42,000 RPM. The propellers are off the shelf components, but the team tested different propeller lengths and pitches. And it's important to get the balance of the propeller's length and its pitch right, as it has a big effect on performance. Make the propeller too long and it takes more power to turn it, draining the batteries too quickly. And if you make it too long, the propeller tip actually goes so quickly it approaches and might go through the sand barrier, which causes all kinds of problems, like I discussed in our video about the Aussie Invader 5 land speed record car, and something well explained in this old documentary. Firstly, the diameter can be increased. This enables an efficient high aspect ratio blade shape to be maintained, but increases the tip velocity, which is of critical importance, since compressibility effects at transonic and supersonic speeds greatly increase drag, which reduces the propeller's efficiency. On the other hand, if you make the propellers too short, they have too little surface area to push against the air, meaning not enough thrust for the high speeds required. And it's not just the length that the team needed to test, it was also the pitch. Pitch basically makes that column of air moving downwards uh, go faster because you're scooping more air with the same RPM, but then it gets harder for the motor to turn it to spin it because it has more resistance against the air. So uh, for the size motor that we had, if we put more pitch than we had now, basically the motor was struggling to get the RPM to go. And if the propeller is too flat, if it has too little pitch, then it won't be moving enough air. And so the drone would never meet the top speed. So the team played with the length and the pitch until they had the right balance between speed and efficiency. 
By the way, if you've ever considered a role in F1 or motorsport and want some tips to improve your chances, we're running a free webinar led by the ex-head of talent at an F1 team. It's on the 22nd of April and you can find details in the description. So the drone was pretty much together, but the team was still worried about whether it was going to be quick enough to keep up with Max at Silverstone. And it was at this point that Red Bull came in to offer some F1 technology assistance. Technology that the Dutch drone gods didn't have access to themselves. And then Red Bull Advanced Technologies came in with their uh, uh, materials and their production uh, uh, techniques to make it, make it even lighter. So they made the canopy, the outside part and some of the carbon structures from some really like cool materials in their like in their Formula One factory. Ralph was also the pilot of the drone, which is an FPV, first person view type drone. I have video goggles on, which basically show the live feed from the drone. So that's pretty much the same perspective you see in the end video, but just very low quality. And with Cops Corner being 1000 meters from where Ralph was flying the drone, my first thought was surely there's a delay between what the drone is actually doing and what Ralph was seeing in the goggles. But there was only a 30 millisecond delay. That's three hundredths of a second, which is very quick and more than fast enough for Ralph to control the drone properly. And the goggles had the drone's telemetry on them too, showing Ralph things like battery status, battery voltage, speed and RPM, similar to what an F1 driver can see on their dashboard. But what was most interesting to me was that Ralph wasn't the only person flying it. So we have basically four people team. So that's Ralph piloting the drone. He's focused on keeping up with Max and keeping him in shot. Then someone watching the telemetry, ready to warn Ralph if batteries are draining too quickly or something's getting too hot. And finally, there's someone else flying a completely different drone. So he's flying another drone above the track, um, which has a signal relay. So that's, that's the only way I can make the signal go around the full track, around all the buildings and everything. Having the extra team members involved like this is critical because Ralph's focus needed to be 100% on the flying. Because unlike your average Mavic drone, this type of drone can't fly itself. This drone doesn't know what's up or down. So you're just controlling the position of the drone and the rates of the position that it changes and it doesn't do anything for you except when you hit the emergency button to fly back maybe, but otherwise uh, it's fully manual. And this makes sense to me. It happens in car racing too, where something like a Ferrari race car will have driver aids. And while they make an amateur driver much quicker and safer, a professional will always prefer the freedom of having all of the assists turned off. So in the Red Bull video, we see the drone comfortably following Max, but they never actually mention how much faster the drone might go. So I asked Ralph how it compared under acceleration, braking and cornering. First up, acceleration. And when you watch the videos, this is where the Red Bull drone looks the quickest. Take a look at when they first raced Coulthard at Millbrook Proving Ground. Just look at that thing take off. Meanwhile, the old Red Bull is scrambling for grip on a damp surface. But by the magic of editing, the two are reasonably close at the end of the run. But I doubt that that was the actual result. Uh, so acceleration drones mostly have the edge over cars because they're just so light and nimble and the power to weight ratio is just insane. This drone even it doesn't even accelerate that fast compared to normal racing drones uh, because it's still quite heavy uh, but still we out accelerate the car uh, quite well i think we go 100 to 300 kilometers an hour in two seconds so one nil to the drone but what about turning surely with all the aero the f1 class stands a chance without any effort it's actually pulling the same like five six g's as the car is pulling there uh, and I could probably pull a lot more if I just turn it. <laughs> but this really impressive turning ability is only at high speed, as you have the air resistance acting on the nose like I spoke about earlier. At slower speeds, there's less air pushing on the outside of the nose, meaning turning the drone relies more on the propellers, resulting in a lower g-force. But the drone still turns more quickly than the F1 car. So, 2-0 to the drone. However, what's most impressive about an F1 car? Well, that's how quickly it slows down. And thankfully, the F1 car can retrieve a point here. Slowing it down is more of a problem because, yeah, a modern Formula 1 car breaks at like 5 Gs or something. It really slows down fast. And, and if I stop giving it throttle, basically, the drone, it just 
keeps on going because it's it's built like a bullet shape. The drone doesn't have brakes and Ralph can't just whack the motors in reverse. It'd make the drone too unstable. So he's relying solely on drag to slow him down. And that just isn't as good as tons of downforce and four carbon brakes. So two one to the drone, but how much faster would the drone be if they did a flat out lap? Well, the first thing to note was that Verstappen's lap was done in the wet in February, which aren't ideal conditions for an F1 car. And so the lap took about two minutes, around 30 seconds slower than the lap record in the dry. But Ralph reckoned the drone would be significantly faster than even the lap record. Maybe like 10 seconds faster than a car, like a 118. So that's a very quick lap keeping between the white lines. And I can't think of anything else that would be any quicker. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And what's interesting to me about Ralph and all the engineers that I've spoken to is that they're always trying to make things faster, lighter, stronger, and well, just better. As we've seen in our other videos, engineers are always pushing boundaries. It's a constant cycle of improvement and then finding a weakness. So what's the next thing to improve on this drone to make it even faster? Definitely some more battery technology would help this drone. Then you could put more, a lot more capacity into the battery um, and still have the, the the power, the output to, to reach the top speeds. So a similar request to a motorsport engineer. More power with the same weight and the same size. Engineers just never change. I recently spoke to an F1 aerodynamicist about how he'd design an F1 car if there were no rules, and it was fascinating. Just click here to watch it now. Thank you very much to Ralph for the interview. You can find more about him and the team at DutchDroneGods.com and their Instagram page. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.